An invisible line, which is both real and not real, separates two worlds. We take a closer look at this mysterious boundary in this video, so be sure to stay tuned until the end. If you like it, I'll be galactically happy about a thumbs up, because that's how we get the YouTube algorithm to show this video to even more people, who will then learn something. Thanks guys and welcome. Imagine you were standing in Bali right now. Wouldn't be the worst thing, right? And on the horizon you can see the island of Lombok just 32 kilometers away. You'd think that the flora and fauna of these two islands wouldn't differ much, wouldn't you? They're right next to each other in the same climate zone, a bit like the Dominican Republic and Puerto Rico, so you probably wouldn't expect much different wildlife. The likelihood of a seagull stealing my chips is similar on both islands. But not so on Bali and Lombok, because these two islands are in different worlds, even though they are only a few kilometers apart. And this invisible line is to blame. A border that is as imaginary as it is real. It means that the islands to the east and west of it differ massively in their flora and fauna, as if you were suddenly switching worlds. Before I tell you why, let's play a little game. Let me know in the comments what you think causes this invisible border. Why do completely different animals live to the east of the border than to the west? I'm really looking forward to hearing your solutions and whether you're right. An orangutan could steal your fries on the island of Borneo. A little further east, on the island of Sulawesi, however, this is impossible because there are no orangutans there. But there is a charming jewelry lorikeet, which you would never meet on Borneo. There are numerous examples of such striking differences in the fauna of the Southeast Asian islands. And the first person to recognize this was the British naturalist Alfred Russell Wallace, who incidentally developed ideas on the theory of evolution independently of Charles Darwin and is now somewhat unjustly forgotten. The idea of natural selection came to him in a feverish dream on a journey through the Malay Islands. And later, on the same voyage, he recognized the existence of the natural boundary between the islands. Two great ideas on one trip? Not bad. The one idea that always comes to me when I'm traveling is to order another gin and tonic. This invisible boundary that he discovered in the Malay archipelago is now named after him and is called the Wallace Line. But how can this be explained? Islands that are sometimes only a few kilometers apart, on which exactly the same temperature and humidity conditions prevail, have completely different plant and animal species. Scientists call this a biogeographical line. And one thing was immediately clear to Wallace. It has nothing to do with distances, because some islands on different sides of the Wallace line are closer to each other than islands on the same side. Other mysterious forces must be at work here, namely geology. Wallace recognized that the geological past shapes the biological present. A key insight that led to the development of biogeography as an independent science. And a really exciting thing about biogeography is that it allows us to draw conclusions about major geological upheavals of the past based on the current plant and animal world. Based on the Southeast Asian islands and the Wallace Line, we can now say that all the islands west of the line must have once belonged to the Asian mainland, because large land mammals such as tigers, rhinos, and elephants, which we also find on the mainland, live there. The islands to the east of the line seem to be geographically more connected to Australia. Here we find large lizards such as Komodo dragons and prey animals such as the bear Cuscus. So Wallace had already correctly recognized that geographical changes were a cause of the Wallace lineage and also that strong ocean currents kept the species from spreading beyond the lineage to other islands. However, Wallace was not yet aware of another major cause of the invisible boundary. And before I tell you what that is, a quick hint that you can help me a lot with a thumbs up for the video. We can make a little challenge out of it. Let's try to get 500 thumbs up for the video. Let's go! So, now the main aspect for the Wallace line, plate tectonics. Now you might think, It's obvious. Why didn't Wallace check that? The idea of plate tectonics has only been widely accepted since the 1960s. Even though we now take it for granted that the outer layer of the Earth, the lithosphere, is divided into several large tectonic plates. These plates move slowly over the plastic subsurface of the Earth's mantle and this plate movement leads to the formation of mountains, deep sea trenches, earthquakes and volcanoes. Plate tectonics is therefore an absolutely fundamental explanation for the geological phenomena and changes that occur on the Earth's surface. But at the time of Wallace, this was not yet known. The theory of evolution is older than the discovery of plate tectonics. 
when my father was born, in 1954, we didn't know anything for sure about the movements of the Earth's plates. This kind of thing always shows me that we shouldn't take our knowledge of today, this absolute science fiction world in which we basically live, for granted. And that we can't even imagine in our wildest dreams where the world will be in 60 years time. However, the island world of Malaysia, Indonesia, Papua New Guinea and the like is one of the most tectonically interesting places in the world, as three plates meet here, the Eurasian, Australian and Philippine plates. This leads to extreme volcanism. In this amazing picture, taken from the ISS, we can see seven active volcanoes. Five on Java, one on Bali and one on Lombok. And plate tectonics has been instrumental in creating the Wallace Line. Because a long time ago, millions of years ago, there were two primordial continents in the region, Sahul and Sunda. You guessed it, most of present-day Australia, New Guinea, and the surrounding islands. So everything east of the Wallace Line, and Sunda is the area of today's Malay Peninsula, most of Indonesia and some of the surrounding islands, i.e. the area west of the Wallace Line. It was only 20 to 25 million years ago that Sahul and Sunda approached each other and became neighbors. This also explains why the Australian fauna is so unique, with animal species that cannot be found anywhere else. Because Sahul was probably completely isolated for an eternally long period of time. And now let's travel back in time, to a time when mammoths still roamed Europe, for example. Do mammoths also steal fries? At that time, there was still an ice age and the sea level was much, much lower. But then, 8,000 years ago, the thick ice sheets began to melt and the sea level rose. A large part of today's island world in Southeast Asia was previously part of the Sahul and Sunda land masses, and the islands that exist today were only formed as a result of the rise in sea level. But some islands, right in the middle, were neither part of Sahul nor Sunda. This region is known as Wallacea, the intermediate region between Sahul and Sunda, the link between Australian and Asian flora and fauna. Although these intermediate islands play a special role, they were largely colonized by Australian species, so that today they can be counted as being to the right of the Wallace Line. Take, for example, the Komodo dragon that lives there. The first fossils of the ancestors of this gigantic lizard were found in Australia and are estimated to be 3 million years old. So folks, the moral of the story, we see, even if German Eurovision Song Contest participants don't want to admit it, borders are real and part of nature even if you can't see them with the naked eye. Quick note that I'm very, very close to 20,000 subscribers, so help me cross that line and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thank you very, very much guys. Let's stick to fascinating adaptations of nature. The frogs in the Chernobyl radioactive exclusion zone are changing. They turn black. To see the incredible original footage of what the radiation has done to the frogs, be sure to click on the video below. And if you want to support my work, treat yourself to real meteorites in my space store, a piece from outer space, just for you, while stocks last. Every purchase helps me to keep the channel going. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video. Take care, guys.